Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I am from IGS Electronics and today we are going to step away from the drives a little bit and we're going to look at it, a uh, PLC and that PLC will be manufactured by Crozet. I've been meaning to do these for quite some time, actually I've got two of them, I've got uh, one for transistor one and one the relay one. We're going to quickly have a look at the, how both of them are wired and things like that. But one thing I love about these uh, control uh, controllers, and they actually have uh, come out in the world leaders of uh, uh, producing the microcontrollers because their softwares are free. And I will be leaving a link in the description below where you can download the software, all modules that has been produced by Crozet. They are all softwares are for free. I think it's the HMI software. There's even uh, the, the newer version. I think it's Crozet Softos the day they call it. And for the Crozet Millennium 3, you need the software called a 3M Soft or something like that. I will show you how to get that as well. I will show you how to upload and download the program. Do some little bit of wiring about it. And we're going to have a look at the bit about about this front screen what that front screen does and things like that it is absolutely easy to use it's literally made, built for f absolutely entry level uh, people who want to start in uh, PLC programming and that uh, you can't really go wrong with it if unless you uh, unless you're really completely lazy to read all the instructions and things like that on because uh, each each component in that uh, in a uh, software it's easy explained. It's, 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 it's like child proof. You just drag things around and just connect this and connect that. And if you don't understand something, you can click, right click, and go explain. And he will explain what each things are. So it's, it's, it's no wonder they've been winning awards because the software is a fantastic entry level for anybody to start doing some programming and some some uh, automations. So you can do a lot, and I mean with these controls, you can do a lot of programming, a lot of. Uh, automations and all sorts of things that you want to achieve this guy does it does all the analog digital signals functions you name it he's got it all and it's just the way they made it it is so simple so uh, definitely go download the software check them out and then uh, get uh, cracking with these you can update these controllers I have these controllers on my uh, eBay website and not sure my website but definitely on my eBay page if you want one of these you will definitely want these but there's another thing you will need is a programming cable which looks like that which I will leave in description as well the part number for it so unfortunately this is roughly about 140 quid I think but you only buy it once and then these controllers obviously come with all different sizes and things like that so uh, you can get them from various places and it's just uh, it's depending where you want to buy it but I sell them as well a fairly good discount because some of them I use and some of them are new but anyway Let's crack on with these because I'm quite quite uh, hyped to get them going and uh, check them out. And before we get started, uh, here at IGS again, as I always say, we are buyers and sellers for the parts. If you go part, if you're after, if you're looking for the parts, we got you. If you're looking to sell the part, we got you as well. So uh, you already most likely can find out, uh, know all our uh, contact information in a website or eBay or whatever, whichever way you want to contact with us. So without further ado, let's get cracking. <music> Alrighty, first let's look at the wiring of the actual unit and a little bit about the front display, display and things like that. I thought going to be doing both relays today because the first, my second relay is a, is a transistor output and it's got analog inputs as well. That's a subject for a different video, so I thought I'm going to stick just to a relay CD20 uh, uh, controller. These controllers are coming all sorts of different uh, configurations once you want uh, to, them to be. You can find them pretty much very easy on a Crozet website. And uh, this one in here has got a uh, eight relay outputs and uh, it's got, I think it's got 10, 10 uh, DC inputs, 10 or 12, 10 or 12 DC inputs and things like that. And the way you wire it, actually, before we start, I'll show you a little bit of the screen. The screen is highly customizable. Let me just zoom that in a little bit. This one hasn't been customized at all, so it's got not much actually into it, but you can literally, in a software, redesign all this screen. You can have all sorts of things. These buttons can and interact with your PLC and things like that if you assign it inside the program, which I'll show you a little bit, just a brief show in a minute when we're going to go through the software. But the main things you'll be able to see down here by clicking Escape or 
Uh, oh, okay button, both of them take to this, 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 this uh, small screen. So you can see down there, I have a little uh, thing that keeps spinning all the time. That tells you that the program is in the run mode. So then you, you can pretty much click OK and then, and then it will stop the, come on. And as you can see, the spinning thing just uh, stopped in here. When you're going to connect to the laptop or the PC, and we're going to do it in a minute, it's going to show it like a little screen on here and sometimes uh, people uh, have like to protect the intellectual property uh, you will have like a key on it and so uh, if you're going to want to see what's inside the PLC or download the program from the actual uh, PLC you won't be able to do it unless you know the password so be aware of that if you have a key in front of the in, the, in front in, on your screen and uh, you're trying to back it up this is this basically is what i do i i go around and back up plcs up and things like that because i'm a service engineering uh if i see the key on the closet millennium i want it it's pointless unless unless whoever designed it yeah, is giving is, is giving you permission to do so and gives you the password so if you have that that's pretty much uh, that's what you need to do the next one in here if you select, selected some parameters so again, I set up you know software and things like when you design a program. Whoever designed this uh, this PLC, this is a used PLC. We have a look in a minute what's inside there. And nobody has uh, done any parameters adjustments you can do in there. You can do and there's nothing in there. So uh, and the, the last one, which is the miscellaneous, is basically where you can literally uh, you can check out the version. So the base in here it tells you what version you are and what uh, what controller is and things like that, the firmware and things like that. And also, if you have some extensions, you'll be able to see some extensions uh, and all the all the uh, same same uh, kind of same information the one you've seen here in the base. And then, and then it's obviously the clock. If you go in there, you can set up your uh, date times and summer times and blah blah blah. And obviously, if you have a folder being developed, you will always have like exclamation mark in in, in the screen somewhere in the bottom showing you. You can always go in there and click on it and it will tell you what fault it is. And then obviously uh, I will see if I can leave the link below in the description so you can actually click on and see if you have any faults. You'll be able to see what those faults mean. And, and that's pretty much it from the screen, which is not custom, customized at all. Because all these buttons and this plus minus and A's and B's and even escapes and OK's, they all can be uh, customized inside the PLC and they can sound more or less anyways. Uh, interact with the program if you wish to because it's like a form of a small HMI so that's regarding for the front screen a wiring obviously I've got 24 volt DC going in I've got my power supply in the back and on here let me just zoom out a little bit here we go so you got 24 volt DC going in and from the same power supply if you you can actually from the beep from the different power supply uh, you are from any from any power supply to send the minus into a uh, negative to twenty four into minus signs in here, and obviously then uh, now you have to use the same plus from those uh, from those power supplies to send the signals back. So we just twenty four volt. Now I've got my little wire hanging in here. So pretty much, and as you can see down here, it gets one two three four five six, and then then uh, C B D E F G, and uh, it sort of see if it, it highlights which ones is, is being activated and the same goes to outputs as well and uh, outputs is actually look at the whooping relay output is 8 amp you, know, you should be able to see that 8 amp that's a hell of a good uh, relay it's quite a lot of a current you can handle but again any voltage for the relays can go in and come out each one of the relays are fully separated from each other so uh, you can use like the 5 volt in there 24 in there 24 ac down there 24 whatever volts you want you can uh, sort of a user. We're going to quickly upload the small little program and see how it works. But that's how pretty much you send the. I'll show you in a minute how that where you send the whatever power you want to switch and it comes out and that will be switched with the relay. That's pretty much the f uh, quick explanation how the front of a uh, uh, PLC and all the wiring works. So let's get the computer and I'll show you the, the software. Alrighty, once you have clicked the link that I have provided below, it will take you to this page. You can always uh, go as well through uh, through crosset.com software and download, but if you want to quickly get to it, I'll left a link in below. So there's all the software that uh, Crosset are providing, which is the Crosset Soft. This is for the newer controllers they are releasing, and these are the, for the M3 and Millennium ones. This is down here. Once you click it, download, fill in all this information, and you'll be able to download the file, and you get the file uh, in form of uh, I have a WinRAR. You probably get it in zip or things like that. It doesn't really matter. Open it up. Oop. 
and we just drag that across and in there you just open that one up and uh, just double click on that one and off you go and just follow all the instructions so the new software will be installed once you're done you will get something like this on here which is the M3 shot and let's open it up so this is what well, that was quick uh, this is how it opens up fairly quickly so uh, this is what it looks like from the basic uh, window so first things what you want to do once you have uh, plugged in your uh, USB in your computer do if you got the cable which I can your part number description below and let's establish uh, you can start a new a, uh, a new uh, what's it called the project so like what the uh, PLCs you're going to be doing and blah 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 so uh, and uh, I strongly suggest if you see if you select it to what you want to do uh, try not to go through with these numbers and everything XD26 and then it's going to be some CDs and XDs and XBs and uh, now we don't want, and things like that uh, follow the number and the reference check in your uh, uh, controller right on the side where it says the part number of this is going to give you this reference number so this gives you exact indications what controller you're going to be using so in our case we're going to be doing the CD versions of it and things like that but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be downloading this file from the actual controller I've got in there already so to the first thing we're going to do is establish the connections and then when uh, here on controller it's visible there here in control, I do apologize, I don't use the capture cards. I tried it and didn't work. I just, I'm, I'm an engineer, not bloody software thing. So, uh, anyway, just go into your connections, configure. Takes a bit of a while to open up. Come on. So, you sort of need to, uh, there we go, we opened it up. So it's all, it's all I need to tell you what COM port you are going to be using and I'll show you in a minute how to get to that, we know what COM port you are using. So as it already says down there, and I'm COM port USB in the COM port 3, select that one, then you press OK. Oh, actually one thing is uh, you can actually do the test. I have to wait again till it opens up, come on. Da -da 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 -da. So, come on. I don't know why this process takes so much. What you can do, once you select it and you click a test and it says your well, connection is successful, it should be straightforward how to do that. So pretty much that's how we establish the connection. And to find out what sort of USB you're using, just go to Windows, Settings, Devices, and it'll show you uh, other devices. As you can see, I've got Dell, and then it says your Millennium 3 USB cable. I'm using Windows 10. So uh, it says in the COM3, pretty much that's how you find out what COM you're using. So next, there's a couple of ways to say, you can start a new project if you want to do, go that way and things like that. So, but what are we going to do in here? For example, we are a service, as I said, I'm a service engineer, I'm not a programmer and things like that. I program enough what I need and things like that, but I'm no way uh, 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 these whiz kids that are doing a hell of a lot of programming. So. But with this controller again, it says it gets me everything I want to build machines when I do. So uh, regarding uh, uh, connection, we already established that. And then you, I can see as uh, there's read, reading the controller, clear the content of the controller and control diagnostics, uh, start controller with reset saved values and blah, 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 blah. I just basically read down there. So what, what are we going to do now? We just read what's inside the controller. And there we go. As soon as we click that, because you already established a uh, connection, it's just going to download what's inside the controller. And that is the wrong controller. That is uh, the cable is connected. Let me go and reconnect cable controller to a different one. All right, now I've plugged in the uh, cable in the right controller. Let's do that again. Uh, read from controller. And it's just going to replace the whole thing. Uh, automatic construction pro yeah why not and there we go now you got all the entire program in here and uh, again if you are in a servicing and you want to back it up just in case controller goes down save it so uh, click the save button and then uh, in whatever the file is cross that automation million 3 3 and then you just type in blah 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 what program it is and then you will just click save and it would save that in that nice a file for just in case your controller goes go. That's what I would usually do when I work in service. I always back it up all PLC programs and that's why I have all the softwares 
And uh, regarding uh, programming, so uh, what we can't do in here, just let's wipe everything off. What's in that? In that controller, which is uh, well, clear. Here we go. Yes, let's get rid of the whole thing. Contents and controller has been erased. Goodbye. And before we're going to do, we're going to start a new project. No, we don't want to save that anymore. And by doing that, and my number as I own the PLC, it is ending with 051974. No, 970. 970. Oh, 8890051. Pretty much just follow that. Looks like this one's got some uh, analog input as well. It's pretty much going to tell you what it's got input wise. And you can tell where it looks like I've got some analogs there. And things like uh, 88797051. Yeah, that's mine. And uh, if you are using any extensions, you need to uh, add them as well, which I don't, I'm not going to use any of them. So it's going to show you a list of uh, everything that you can add. So that's all you can add to it. Oh, that sucks. Uh, because on the XD, XD ones, you can add quite quite a lot. So uh, it looks like this one, not much can be added to it. So and then you click next, and then you choose what sort of uh, program you're going to use. If you are new to the programming, I fully uh, strongly suggest to use for a uh, FBD uh, way of doing it. Because later you sort of, uh, you have to like uh, type things up and things like that. And, but in FBD, you just drag things around. That's, that's very dead easy. And then you're pretty much ready to go. And all we're going to do, we're going to create a very simple program just to show you various around that in here. On top of it, uh, you will see the buttons. With all the functions you can remember, I told you about the screen, you can fully customize what these things do. You can assign these uh, buttons and things like that to all of this, whatever you want to do. Be creative about it. There's so much you can do. It is dead simple. Uh, you can play things around it. I usually go down here, simulation mode and monitoring mode. Both modes are easy access and things like that. So we can, I'll show you that in a minute. So start program, we just, the, my, my favorite one is, uh, let's get the digital input one. It actually assigns all the digital inputs down there and all the outputs down there. You can't go pretty much wrong. Whatever you drag that, that output or input is going to be working. Let's put the digital input one uh, output uh, down there. And let's say what else we're going to do. My favorite one, where is it? Set reset. Boom, you drag that one. So you just say, how easy is that? Jesus, now you can move things around if you want to. Just make it nice and nice and clean. And, oh, let's get another button to reset. Let's get another digital input to, and let's sign that to down. So digital input two is going to be resetting it for us. And, uh, oh yeah, we just pretty much assigned it to a digital input. Boom, that's pretty much it. That's the our first level. That's, that's all we're going to be doing today because, um, as I said, there's so much. This is like subject to Jesus Christ for all other things now. Like and then uh, let's say uh, when you go into simulation mode, you can sort of simulate, sort of uh, uh, clip things on, see? And uh, here we go. Oh. As you can see, my digital output is on. And by clicking that, just power those off. You can sort of, as I say, you can simulate these things. And if it works, it works. And if we know, you can sort of do it or change it. But much that's the simulator. It says play around with it. It's, it's, it's so much fun and you can do that. So once you've done that, just go to the controller and write to the controller. So here we go. So we're doing that. Just uh, say, yeah, that would do. No, actually, we don't want to change. We don't want to save it. Do you want to continue? Yes, please. There we go. And that way, it is going into a controller, and that is you are done. That's how you get in and out and save and things like that. I hope that is making you a lot of sense. And let's get to the have a look at it, how we wired that up and then how it works. Alrighty, now that we are back into back to the controller, I quickly show you what I uh, added. I added the, exactly what we programmed in. Ooh. It's a start stop button on there. I've got a uh, ooh, just drag this one out a little bit. Try to keep up the cables too. All I have in here, as you can see, I've got the 24 volt from my DC power supply coming to back of these both normally close open contact. 
and both the one of them uh, goes the start goes back to input one as we programmed and the stop will go back to input two as we programmed as well so pretty much that's what it looked like in here let me put that on top and in uh, that relay in there which we added down there i have 24 volts coming from uh, uh, power supply as well uh, the same power supply that I'm using the uh, inputs from. Usually, you're not do, supposed to do that. Just uh, especially when you're using the high currents and things like that, you would use a separate power supply for that. And basically, it goes in and then it comes back out and it goes to the contactor uh, a, a one in here, which is my plus and my neutral has already been supplied by uh, power supply already. I think I am a little bit upside down. Ah, that will do. So. If you try to click start, stop, uh, and the buttons down there, as you can see, uh, you can see the, I you know, hope you can see the, it, the inputs are lighting up now, but nothing's happening because your controller is not in the run mode. Remember this little thingy down there? We don't need this one anymore, so let's remove that one now. Um, that one down there is not uh, turning, so pretty much just tells you that the controller is not in the run mode, so that's what we, all we need to do in there run run and click run and here we go start spinning and now you are pretty much ready to go and when you click the, the green button which is down here there we go the kind of the input has been activated as you can see the number one down there and pretty much exactly what we created in the in the software uh, we create a small program to latch uh, to set and reset the output one and that, ladies and gentlemen, will be enough for the review of uh, Crozet Millennium 3. I'm hoping that it gives you a good insight how to get started with these controllers. It's a fantastic starter, so strongly, strongly advise or suggest, not advise, suggest uh, if you want to get into, into, into programming, that would be a very fantastic. It's a cheap way to go into it because I think brand new controllers like that cost roughly about 200-250 quid. Used ones, I said, I got, I got few, and I'm selling for about 145, and then some of them are even selling cheaper than that. So uh, it's a fantastic entry level, thing, and hopefully this is helping you to get you started. And the main thing is, you got free software. That's all it matters, and these are brilliant. And as you could see, the controllers is very, very, the software is very, very easy to use. So that will be it, and hopefully it helps you out. And uh, if you like the video, please smash that like. If you didn't, dislike it. Comment down below uh, what you like, what you didn't like, and things like that. And other than that, I will see. Thank you very much for watching the video, and I will see you next video.